service only at Safeway. Jerry Brown's weather, weeknights on News 7. The following is based on an actual court case. The crime of burglary is not punishable by death. When his rattlesnakes kill a burglar. I thought the robbers would believe the sign. Was it a last resort? The last two years I've been hit 16 times. Or was it manslaughter? Vardis Fisher took the law into his own hands, and Frank Sterling died as a result. The Judge Jill Jakes and Judge Lewis Welsh preside. Where the issues are real, the decisions are final. Superior Court. We understand the community has raised money for Mr. Fisher's defense. Is that no, right, no counsel? No comment. Uh, Mr. Fisher, do you still feel justified in what you did? You bet I do. We'll have a statement for the press after the trial. Thank you. Mr. Bernard. Mr. Bernard, why is the DA's office prosecuting Fisher when the people in his neighborhood want to hang a medal on him? Well, take a seat and listen. And when you hear how Frank Sterling died, you won't have to ask why we're trying Fisher for manslaughter. Please come to order. Superior Court is now in session. The Honorable Jill Jakes Judge presiding. Be seated. The jury is impaneled, and I believe we have disposed of all preliminary motions, so let us proceed with the case of State versus Fisher. Mr. Bernard, your opening statement, please. Yes. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm Morgan Bernard, the Assistant District Attorney. There is no principle more firmly established in American law than the one regarding trap setting. You are not allowed to defend property by setting a trap that will take the life of another. And yet, on December 11th of last year, Vardis Fisher let loose four large, deadly diamondback rattlesnakes in his auto parts store. A few hours later, Frank Sterling died from the bites of those snakes. Now, once you have heard all the facts presented here today, I am sure that you'll agree with the state that Vardis Fisher is guilty of manslaughter and should be sent to prison for the maximum sentence of 11 years. Mr. Willoughby, statement for the defense, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm James Willoughby. I represent Vardis Fisher. The prosecutor left out some crucial facts in his opening comments. Mr. Bernard failed to mention the almost total failure of police protection in Mr. Fisher's neighborhood. He left out the number of times Mr. Fisher's store had been robbed and burglarized. He omitted the large sign that Mr. Fisher had posted to warn potential burglars of the snakes that guarded his store at night. Bartis Fisher is a law-abiding, hard-working citizen like all of you. He did not intend the snakes to be a trap, else he would not have advertised their presence. He meant them to scare off the burglars who were driving him out of business. We will prove that Frank Sterling knew about the snakes, yet had broken into and was burglarizing Mr. Fisher's store when he was bitten. Frank Sterling is the criminal in this case, not my client. The state has begun its case by calling Detective Sergeant William Mays to the stand. Last December the 11th, Mr. Mays? We got a uh, anonymous call at 11.45 p.m., burglary in progress at Fisher Car Parts. We hit the lights, but not the sirens, because we wanted to take these guys, because Fisher had been hit five, six yes, times. Yes, uh, what did you find at Mr. Fisher's store? Uh, forced entry in the back and the whole front window lying in pieces on the sidewalk. Did you enter the store? <laughs> no, sir. We were about to, and we saw that sign. Deadly rattlesnakes loose inside at night. Uh, we decided to call the owner before entering. You knew the owner? Oh, sure. Vardis Fisher had been in business there as long as I'd been on the force. Uh, in old time, he comes barreling up to the store and tells us not to go in until he gets the snakes caught. Did you then enter the building with the defendant? No, sir. Uh, Diamondback don't care if you're wearing a uniform. <laughs> Besides, uh, he, while he was looking for the snakes, the loop sticks to catch him, we got another call. And what was the nature of the second police dispatch? Uh, emergency at 1921 Nass Street, about three blocks away. I left Tim at Fisher's place and drove down there. I found this black girl screaming and moaning and holding on to this guy who's all cut up and bleeding. Please tell the jury who the young man was who was dying on the steps of 1921 Nass. Night boy Sterling. That's Frank Sterling, the snake bite victim? If that's what you want to call him. The victim? was twitching and frothing from the mouth and bleeding from about 10 places. Did Frank Sterling live to see County General? Nah, they were carrying a corpse. When I got back to Fisher's place, he'd rounded up the snakes. 
Inside, we found Pelvis Pritchard stuck up on a shelf, sniveling like a little baby. He said he wouldn't come down till we turned on the light so he could see the snakes were gone. <laughs> that is Elvis Pritchard, right, Sergeant, with the street name Pelvis. Did you take a statement from Pritchard? Right after I read him his rights. Mm -hmm. And what, what did he say about the snakes? Objection. Mr. Bernard's asking for hearsay. Sustained. Uh, Mr. Pritchard is on the witness list. We'll hear from him directly. Well, then that's all I have for this witness, Your Honor. Cross-examination, Mr. Wilby. Sergeant Mays. Is there an unofficial police designation for Mr. Fisher's neighborhood? Yeah, Mr. Fisher's uh, store is west of Paco Street, and we got a saying down at the station, there is no law west of the Pecos. <laughs> Can you tell the jury why you say that? Oh, well, it's the highest violent crime rate in the city. No cop goes in there without their hands and their gun and, or a, close, a backup close by. Tell me, Sergeant Mays, did you know Nightboy Sterling well? You mean Frank? <laughs> sure. I mean, down at the station, he was a fixture. Uh, I collared him maybe 10, 12 times. Objection and move to strike. This whole line of questioning is irrelevant. Irrelevant? Come on, Bernard. You're trying to hide Sterling's record so you can railroad the jury in Mr. the... Mr. Willoughby! Approach the bench. Mr. Willoughby, if you force me to declare a mistrial because of your careless remarks in front of the jury, I will hold you in contempt. Am I understood? Your Honor, the dead man was a Judge street Judge, you hooker. heard the oh, testimony. Vardis Fisher set an indiscriminate trap for anybody. If Mays and his partner had walked through that door, they'd have been bitten just like Sterling. And that is why Sterling's record is irrelevant. I agree, Mr. Bernard. The objection is sustained. The motion to strike is granted. Now go back to your places while I instruct the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I am sustaining the prosecutor's objection to questions regarding the criminal background of Frank Sterling. Why is she doing that? Sterling was a thief. That's the whole point. He is not on trial. I'm sorry, Mr. Fisher. Please it's the ignore law. anything you may have heard Sometimes in that regard. Sometimes you can sneak into the back door, but you can't get into the front. I'm sure going to try. Mr. Willoughby, would you like to continue cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Sergeant Mays, after Nightboy Sterling's body was removed, did you obtain a warrant to search his apartment? Yes, sir, I did. Well, we've got a list here of the stolen articles we Move found. Move to in strike, his... Your Honor. Mr. Willoughby is trying to circumvent your previous ruling. Motion granted. Jury will disregard the answer. Mr. Willoughby, you have been warned, and I will not warn you again. Drop this line of questioning, or you will be in contempt. So, Your Honor. Are you going to be job hunting forever? Take charge of your life at WSS. We'll train you on the latest IBM and WAG office equipment. We'll teach you important skills that can get you ahead. WSS can help you with financial aid if you qualify, and we even offer job placement assistance. Classes begin monthly, so get started on your business career today. Call 457-1818, the Washington School for Secretaries. This pasta will stay good for a year in your freezer. This dried linguine will outlast most marriages. And this will probably survive the next ice age. On the other hand, Contadina fresh pastas and sauces won't last very long at all. We make them fresh, and we keep them fresh, which naturally gives them a great fresh taste. Contadina fresh pastas and sauces. Our days are numbered, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Rolex and Fleischer's Jewelers of Maryland and Hyattsville, your official Rolex jeweler, present a unique opportunity to own the ultimate timepiece, a Rolex. See one of the largest selections of Rolex watches in the area at Fleischer's Jewelers in Maryland. All Rolex timepieces come with a warranty backed by eight decades of Rolex experience. So for Father's Day, graduation, or any special occasion, it's your official Rolex jeweler, Fleischer's Jewelers of Maryland in the Queens Chillum Shopping Center in Hyattsville. I'm not perfect. I don't look perfect. I'm not 21 or what our ideal is as 21. But if you exercise, you're going to reach, you're going to reach something that's very satisfying. You're going to see a change in your body and then you're going to want to do it more and then you're going to see more changes. So you might not reach perfection, but you're, it's a growing process. You're always working. You're always getting better. And if you're always getting better, how much more can you ask for? Join Holiday and get this special four-month membership. Call Holiday today. Assistant District Attorney Wogan Bernard is questioning Leatrice Sterling, the common-law wife of the deceased Frank Sterling. Yeah, I went down. 
And that was Night Boy bleeding and twitching. I thought he had gotten himself cut in a razor fight till I seen all them holes. Was Frank able to tell you what had happened to him? Objection. That calls for hearsay. Overruled. Ladies and gentlemen, ordinarily a witness is not permitted to quote the words of another person. That's the hearsay rule. But the words of a dying person are an exception. The words of a dying person as to from whom and how he sustained his injuries are presumed to be reliable. So you may answer, Miss Sterling. Well, he was choking on this phone out his mouth, but he said, me and Pelvis hit that tire store. They got snakes in there, big snakes. They done bit me all over. Did he say anything else? No. That pig, that cop came, and I told him to call an ambulance, but it was too late. Nightwatch never said nothing else. He just died. Thank you. That's all, Your Honor. Cross-examine, Mr. Willoughby. Mrs. Sterling, where did Nightboy Sterling work? Work? Is that a foreign word? How was Nightboy able to support you and your baby? I don't know. But he always had a little. He never went to no nine to five, if that's what you're saying. Well, he had no job. Was Nightboy Sterling a thief? Your Mr. Honor, Sterling? counsel is determined to flaunt the will of the court and the rule of law by asking irrelevant questions about Frank Sterling's alleged criminal behavior. Objection is sustained. Approach the bench. Mr. Willoughby, your conduct is outrageous. I hereby find you in contempt. And when this trial is over, you will be sentenced. Furthermore, if you continue in this vein, I will declare a mistrial. Sure, Your Honor. Call Deputy Assistant Coroner Inez Karakawa. Dr. Karakawa, what was the conclusion reached after reading the autopsy on Frank Sterling? That the subject has sustained nine bites from one or more large poisonous reptiles. Mm -hmm. Did the police bring you the snakes that they found in Vardis? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. They did, and I brought one of them with me. What is the size and weight of this snake? This diamondback is about three and a half feet long and weighs five pounds, about the same as the other three. Mm -hmm. Would a bite from one of these snakes kill a normal, healthy man? I'm sure it would, in about six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. What if four of these snakes bit a man a total of nine times? What would happen? He would go into shock and die quickly. I doubt even uh, anti-venom shots could save him. In your examination, doctor, did you determine that it was Vardis Fisher snakes that killed Frank Sterling? There's no way to know that for certain. No way to know? Well, what can you say for certain, Dr. Kurokawa? That the venom I found in Frank Sterling's tissues is consistent with that of a large diamond bag rattlesnake, like this one taken from Mr. Fisher's door. Have you ever watched people at the market? They all think they know how to pick the best orange. They squeeze, they tap, they shake. I have no idea what she's doing. But all they have to do is twist the wrist. If it says sun-kissed, you pick it. Hey, always read the label. Fresh sun-kissed oranges now available at Basics and More. Wait for the sun to lighten your hair. The summer might end before the highlights are there. Get natural look and highlights as soon as tonight. Let a little sun in, do your hair right. Let the channel for softness, a super for flair. A new natural lemon puts sun in your hair. A little spritz does it, the sun does the rest. For natural look and summer hair, sun in's the best. Don't wait for the sun to get your hair bright. Get natural look and highlights as soon as tonight. Put sun in your hair, do your hair right. Brick and concrete, sewers and digging, roofing and guttering. Johnny, be quick. Window replacement, electrical wiring, carpentry, paneling. Johnny, be quick. Bathrooms and kitchens, painting and papering, tile and carpeting. Johnny, be quick. Hot water heaters, air conditioning and heating, sewer and drain cleaning. Johnny, be quick. And, of course, all kinds of plumbing. Call Johnny, be quick. 277-6969. 277-6969. Look for a job lately? Employers wanting experience only? Maybe it's time you look into a career as a medical assistant at the National Education Center. This phone number is a good place to start. What are you waiting for? 
Stop drifting. Call for a brochure on careers in the medical field. Call 1-800-722-7337. 1-800-722-7337. Elvis Pritchard, who was arrested at the time of Frank Sterling's death, has been called as the state's final witness. Did you then break into Fisher's car parts by way of the back door? Yeah, right, you know. Like I needed some uh, seat covers for my Impala, you know, and I wanted some, like, tape decks I could sell, you know, just doing business and stuff. So we went down there and uh, got in real easy, man. It was like being home. Uh, then Nightboy says, uh, hey, man, did you hear that? And I said, hear what? And then I heard it. You know, uh, you know those things that they shake with the handles? What do you call those things? Yeah, maracas. Right, right. It was just like that, you know, like... Well, you know, I pull out my light, you know, and I start looking around, and boom, that's when I saw him. You saw what? The snakes, man, these huge snakes, you know, and there was one right in front of us, you know, his tail was kind of like, you know, wiggling like that, and then boom, got Night Boy right in the leg, man, like lightning. So I started climbing the shelves, you know, and I didn't stop till I hit the ceiling. And what about Frank Sterling? Was he able to climb to safety? Uh, he freaked. Uh, he started screaming and stuff, and... Uh, uh, I guess he tripped over something because when I hit him with my light, he was on the ground and there was all these snakes around him. And they were like just going back and biting him and going back and biting him, man. It was sad. Was he able to get up? Uh, yeah, he got up. Uh, he had the snake attached to his arm. He th kind of threw the snake on the floor and then he hit it to the window and he kept running until he was on the sidewalk. And then he kept going after that, man, just screaming and stuff. You then just stayed up on the shelf until the police came? Hey, I'd still be up there now, man, if the cops hadn't come. Thank you. No more questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Mr. Welby. Mr. Pitcher, where are you presently residing? I'm a guest of the state. Three room and board. Three to seven, B and E. Three to seven years in state prison for breaking and entering. Did you ever turn over a place where they had a guard dog, Elvis? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those are the kind of places I like. It's real easy, you know. You just get some paragoric, put it in raw meat, give it to the dog. They're out like a light. So guard dogs were no problem. You said that being in Mr. Fisher's store was like being home. How many times had you and Nightboy Sterling broken into Mr. Fisher's store? Come on, Mr. Bernard gave you immunity to testify, didn't he? Uh, Mr. Willoughby. Uh, uh, eight or nine times. It's all right, Judge. Uh, you know, the D DA can't get me for them robberies. You see, I, I got to deal with Mr. Bernard, right? Judge Jakes instructed the jury to ignore Elvis Pritchard's testimony about previous break-ins. The prosecution concluded its case. Attorney James Willoughby then called Bartis Fisher, the defendant, to the stand. You said you used Fisher store. What happened? The robbers and the burglars, they finally drove me out. Forty years I was there. Forty years earning a living, taking care of my family, selling parts to people who couldn't afford to take their cars to a shop. Now, during those 40 years, how many times were you robbed and burglarized? First 20, I never was touched. Then after the late 60s, once, twice a year, then more and more. The last two years, I've been hit 16 times. What was the value of the merchandise that you lost? $28,000. I added it up, and I couldn't believe it. No one of the insurance company dropped my policy. They was losing money, hand over fist. Now, could you tell the jury how you tried to cut down on the burglaries? I tried everything. I wired the windows. I bought steel doors. Nothing kept them out. The cops, they won't even come in my neighborhood if they don't have to. And they was always late answering a call. And the thieves, my goods would be gone. Did you consider guard dogs? You heard what Pritchett said. Dogs are useless. So when all else failed, you had the idea of putting snakes in your store? Yes. I had this buddy when I was in the Army from Idaho. He taught me how to catch big rattlers. We'd sell them to labs. Get a Christmas card from them every year. So I wrote him a letter asking him if I could get four or five rattlers. And he sent you the snakes? Right. Along with the loopholes that, to handle them, and about eight pages of instructions. Then I got that big sign painted. This sign? Right. I thought the robbers would believe the sign. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? 
take a rattlesnake around the neighborhood, show everybody they was real. Mr. Fisher, did you intend to kill anyone with those snakes? No, I didn't. I just was trying to look after a property, my business. The cops don't help. The alarms don't help. I was just trying to look after what was mine. And now I'm up for manslaughter. What kind of justice is that, Mr. Willoughby? I don't know, Mr. Fisher. I really don't. That's all. Your witness, Mr. Bernard. You knew that the snakes that you had in your store were lethal weapons, didn't you, Mr. Fisher? As lethal as, let's say, setting up a shotgun on a tripwire so that anyone who walked in would be blown away. The door was locked at night. Nobody was supposed to walk in, climb in, or, or break yeah, in. Yeah, but they could have, right? I mean, Sergeant Mays and his partner almost walked into the waiting jaws of your deadly trap, didn't they? They saw my sign. Yeah, but what if someone couldn't read, or, or, or they couldn't see the sign because the street light was burnt out? Your deadly trap couldn't discriminate between friend or foe. The trap that killed Frank Sterling almost killed two innocent police officers. Objection, counsel is arguing with, with my client. Sustained. You'll stop that, Mr. Bernard. Now, do you have any further questions? No, Your Honor. Defense rest. You may step down, Mr. Fisher. All right, Mr. Bernard, now you may make your closing argument. Ladies and gentlemen, you should not, you must not consider the fact that Frank Sterling was in the commission of a felony when he was bitten over and over and killed by Vardis Fisher's deadly trap. The crime of burglary is not punishable by death, and yet that's exactly what Fisher gave to Sterling. Vardis Fisher took the law into his own hands, and Frank Sterling died as a result of it. You must find the defendant guilty of manslaughter. Mr. Willoughby? Ladies and gentlemen, you heard Nightboy Sterling's common-law wife admit that he had never worked an honest day in his life. You heard the sneering admission of Elvis Pritchard that he and Nightboy Sterling had robbed and burglarized Mr. Fisher's store on numerous occasions. That they were well aware of that sign and yet ignored it in their haste to rob him yet again. Don't send the community a message that an honest man can't protect himself from thieves and streets come. Don't send Vardis Fisher to prison for doing what you yourselves would have done under similar circumstances. Tell this man and the community that you agree. Enough is enough. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have in this case facts which may stir up strong emotions. But it is your duty to decide on the basis of law, rationally, not on the basis of sympathy, emotionally, whether or not Vardis Fisher is guilty. Now, I repeat, in your considerations, you must ignore any remarks about Frank Sterling's possible criminal background. Now you may retire to deliberate and attempt to reach a verdict. All rise. In home accidents last year, over three million people were disabled. 100,000 either suffered permanent disabilities or died. There is no second chance when help arrives too late. Should you ever suffer a bad fall or other emergency, prompt help can be as close as a tiny radio transmitter you wear around your neck or on your belt. When you're alone and can't get to the phone, it takes just a press of this button and seconds to alert the Life Call 24-hour manned monitoring center. Help is promptly on the way. There is no second chance when help arrives too late. The Life Call medical alert system can now be leased and is affordable to anyone. Get a free booklet and the vital facts on the Life Call push button life saving system. Call 1 800 554 3000 for your free booklet. The call is free. 1 800 554 3000. That's 1 800 554 3000. Two days ago, my husband was in a bad car accident and it wasn't his fault. Doctors say he'll be in the hospital for three weeks and I don't work for 12 more. Now tell me, what are we supposed to do with the hospital bills, lost pay, and total cost? I ask you, who's going to pay for all this? Call the law offices of Greenberg and Betterman at 589-2200. The first consultation is free. Call Greenberg and Betterman at 589-2200. They'll make sure you get everything you're entitled to under the law.
The majority of people in our gallery think that the storekeeper, Vardis Fisher, is not guilty of manslaughter. The jury's verdict in one minute. Grandpa Redenbacher, I've got it. Got what, Gary? The snack idea of the century. Take America's favorite microwave popcorn, yours, and add the flavor of cheddar cheese or sour cream and onion. Like this? Orville Redenbacher's new cheddar cheese microwave popcorn. Our sour cream and onion popcorn. Fresh, hot, and mmm. The snack idea of the century. And it's his. Who else? Two hot new microwave snacks from Orville Redenbacher. The birthday party's over, but look at this grape juice stain. Resolve challenges your carpet cleaner. Liquid Resolve against the leading foam. On top grape juice, Resolve cleans better. What a difference. Resolve, the carpet cleaner that really works. It starts with a twinge, and soon the contractions begin. This isn't labor pain. It's the start of your monthly cramps. The process is similar. Midol 200 helps block the source of these cramps and relieves the pain. Midol 200. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? How does the jury find on the charge of manslaughter against Vardis Fisher? Your Honor, based on the instructions you gave us, we have no choice. We find the defendant guilty of manslaughter. But, Your Honor, we urge you to show Mr. Fisher mercy when you sentence him. Thank you. You may be seated, sir. Before we adjourn, I would like to thank the jury for the performance of their duty as citizens. But beyond that, I want to commend you for your willingness to follow the law, despite the sympathy that you obviously felt for Mr. Fisher. It is extremely important, especially in difficult times when it may appear that the law-abiding citizen is the loser. All the more important, then, that we all follow the rule of law. If we take the law into our own hands, as Mr. Fisher did, it is a very short-term solution, which quickly leads to anarchy. And please be assured, ladies and gentlemen, that this court can and will consider all the circumstances in imposing the appropriate sentence for the defendant. The jury is discharged. And by the way, in tying up loose ends, the court finds that the appropriate sentence for Mr. Willoughby's contempt of court is a $1,000 fine. The court is now adjourned. After receiving a favorable pre-sentencing report, Judge Jakes sentenced Mr. Fisher to 30 days in county jail and five years supervised probation. After serving his sentence, Vardis Fisher sold his business. Tomorrow on Superior Court... Those two murdered my son and took his money. ...was a missing millionaire murdered by his staff. He just disappeared. Or did a guru's teachings show him a better way of life? What was the subject of this uh, Maharishi's lecture? The ability to literally retire from the world. The issues are real. The decision's final. Superior Court. Superior Court is a Ralph Edwards Stew Billet production in association with Lorimar Telepictures. Good morning. Sure is quiet. I mm, wonder how long that'll last. <laughs> Not long enough. <laughs> How is he? Poor guy. Everything's soaked. There is a thin diaper that's virtually leak-proof, even overnight. This is it. Love's Deluxe, with the night guard system to guard against leaking. Watch. The first time your baby wets, both diapers can absorb. But with the night guard system, Love's can quickly distribute wetness throughout the padding. So as your baby wets through the night, Love's can still absorb without leaking. He's a pretty special guy. He sure is. Especially when his diapers don't leak. Those things are great. Yeah. A year ago, I didn't know a diaper would be so important to me. But I didn't know he would either. Two years ago, I wanted to get a job in the word processing field. So I enrolled in the Smith Business School Clerical and Word Processing course. I learned the skills I needed, and today I have a good job that I'm happy with. You can do it, too. The Smith Business School can train you for a career in less than a year. Choose from courses in accounting and data processing. 
administrative assisting, word processing, or a course in clerical skills. Call 638-1700 for a career in less than a year at the Smith Business School.